Good evening. The House is resumed. Kia ora tātou no reira te whare. Inga iwi, inga rio, inga hawe fa tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Honourable Members, we're still on the budget debate and when the House rose at six o'clock for the meal break, the Honourable Member Darian Fenton was speaking to the Appropriation 213-214 Estimates Bill and the amendments proposed thereof. To speak if she so wishes. I certainly do. You do. And to love lover, Mr Speaker. Uh, my oi. Uh, <laughs> I call the Honourable Member Darian Fenton. Thank you very, very much. And as I was saying before the break, when I had one minute to speak, um, that this budget's extremely disappointing. It's disappointing. After five years of a national government, five, the fifth budget, the fifth budget of this government, the only word you can use to describe it is, Mr Speaker, disappointing. The government's propping up its mates at Sky City and in the big end of town, and they haven't lifted a finger in this budget to help grow real, sustainable, well-paid, decent jobs. There's nothing in this budget for those affected by the entrenched two-speed economy we've been debating today. There's nothing in this budget for the tens of thousands of out-of-work New Zealanders. There's nothing in this budget to give hope or support to hollowed-out regions and unaffordable cities. Our young people are out of work in large numbers and have been consigned to youth wages, and they're expected under this government to be grateful to be paid a pittance. After five budgets of this government, incomes and wealth are ever more concentrated in the hands of a few. CEOs these days are paid sickeningly huge salaries that are on average 35 times the size of a median Kiwi's wage. Something wrong with that. Today, the top 20% of the population earn five times as much as the bottom 20%. And yet, Mr Speaker, two in five seriously deprived children have working parents on inadequate income. So this isn't just about people out of work, it's about people who are working, who are not earning a decent living. Now, even this government's finally admitted that child poverty has become, is, is a problem. And so they've started to talk about it today and uh, about dealing with some of the symptoms. But what was interesting was when John Key admitted that the uh, food and schools program would be here to stay, meaning that he expects the high levels of child poverty that we have today are going to become a permanent feature of New Zealand society, at least under the national government. Inequality in New Zealand has worsened under New Zealand. That started with nationals' tax cuts for the rich in their very first budget. They had the cheek after holding a job summit, remember the job summit that went nowhere, in their first budget to give 40% of their income tax cuts to the top 10% of income earners. And the refusal, ongoing refusal of National to address the gaping hole in our tax structures, the lack of a capital gains tax, is just making it worse. So hard-working New Zealanders who are struggling who are doing their best to find work to upskill will be disappointed in this fifth budget of the National Party. There's nothing in this budget for families who have to work two jobs and still can't make ends meet. There's nothing in this budget for out-of-work New Zealanders who are desperate to get a job. And it breaks promises again. At the last election, John Key promised New Zealanders that his brighter future plan would create 170,000 new jobs over four years. Now that sounded great, that sounded great, but national promises and promises, and in fact, Mr Speaker, they make the same promise over and over again. The first time we heard it was in Budget 2010, three years ago. What John Key promised um, then was more than 170,000 jobs from 2010 to 2014. Promise number two, Budget 2011, 170,000 new jobs will be created from 2010 to 2015, extending it by five years. Promise number three in 2011, the National Party election uh, manifesto or election party material 
They went out and there they did it again, 170,000 new jobs over the next four years. But that's been promised three times. But the truth is, all that National can promise in this budget is that un unemployment will reduce by a pretty pitiful 15,000 uh, jobs over four years to 131,000 people out of work. Now, I'm sure that makes them feel a lot better, those people that haven't got jobs, but it's simply not good enough. It's cold comfort to those 146,000 people around the country that are unemployed. That's 41,000 more people out of work since National came to power. Now, I call that a disgrace. It is a disgrace. It seems the job growth is always just around the corner. But every budget that we see, Treasury has to downgrade its forecast, and it's now predicting, predicting that National will fall, fall 61,000 jobs short of its promise. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the jobs market isn't getting any better. In May, Fonterra uh, announced 300 job losses. A leaked Air New Zealand docu document shows they may cut 150 jobs, and they're actually looking to contract out all of their uh, flight attendants at the moment so they can cut wages. The Department of Conservation uh, confirmed the job losses at 72. 70 jobs to go at Tate Communications, 50 at Tower Life Insurance, Solid Energy, 105 added to the ones that they had, another 400 last year, as a result of Nationals' mismanagement. In Auckland, where I come from, unemployment actually rose to 7.3% in the March quarter. In Northland, in Northland, it's 10%. In Wellington, it's 6.8%. The only thing that is holding up the unemployment figures is the Christchurch rebuild. But it's not creating jobs. The economy under Bill English and John Key is not creating jobs other than those in the Christchurch rebuild, and they have no idea about how to get the economy back on track. No they are sitting, sitting by and watching as people opt out of the labour market. They are giving up, Mr Speaker. It's just too hard to find a job, or they're going off overseas. Under John Key's brighter future, it's easy to see where the money's going. Special deals for Sky City, employment laws for sale, uh, for movie moguls, and I want to talk about that in particular. That deal was supposed to be for the good of New Zealanders, but yesterday we heard that Weta Digital is seeking to bring in 526 foreign workers. That's on top of the 369 jobs they were able to employ from offshore last year. That's nearly 1,000 jobs. Now, where is the responsibility, where is the requirement on this government on Weta Digital with the taxpayer-funded benefits that they, that industry is getting to train New Zealanders to do the work? There isn't one, and Mr Speaker, they will be back next year asking for another 500 workers from overseas. And we're not talking about whether there are some highly schools, skilled jobs, but there are many up that New Zealanders could do without much training, such as cruise services, accounts and publicity. So the government's response to all of this, uh, dreadful budget, sell the assets, uh, take them out of the hands and ownership of New Zealanders, help their mates again. And I just, the last thing I would like to say, uh, Mr Speaker, on the, in the, on the North Shore where I work as a list member, I've been asking questions about the numbers of people that have been asking, um, approaching work and income uh, for uh, support to pay their power and gas bills. You would be, the House would be surprised at these numbers. In Maggie Berry's and Jonathan Coleman's area, there's something like 487. In the Rodney district where March, Mark Mich Mitchell works, there's 968, that's 1,455 people who have applied to, for help to pay their power bill. Yet this government can only talk about selling assets. It, wants, it has no, no ideas about how to make life better for New Zealanders, and it has no idea about how to get people into work to make life better for them. They're looking after their mates. This is a disgraceful budget. I recognise the Honourable Member, Dr Paul Hutchison. Thank you, Mr.